Hey everyone, Chris Murray of Elevation Wheel Company here. Uh, I wanted to go through and redo some individual parts from my how to build a wheel video. Um, admittedly, the first video didn't cover lacing very well. Um, so I wanted to do a better version of that to hopefully give you guys a better idea on how that goes because I was new to making videos at the time and didn't do it very well. So let's go for take two. Um, but some of the stuff that can help you out with this process, you don't need them, but I'm biased and it's a shameless plug because I sell these on my website. Uh, these nipple shuffle boxes make lacing wheels a whole lot quicker and easier. Um, you don't need it, but for deep section rims like this DP we're gonna do, they're very helpful. Um, basically what this lets you do is take a tool like the EVT mall finger tool and just kind of pluck them out one handed. The, normal way if you don't have a tool like that is it's a two-handed job we have to take the other hand and throw them on like that not a big deal but when you're building a lot of wheels it saves time and it's just more convenient um, other than that you'll need some type of spoke prep uh, personally I like to use Will Smith spoke prep with anti-seize over the top of that after the spoke preps dried there's a lot of debates on what works well I've had really good luck with that. Even wheels that have seen multi years of loaded touring and horrible winter conditions, I can still generally true a wheel. Um, some of the other stuff like linseed oil, I don't think lets you true wheels down the road very well. I'm not talking six months down the road, I'm talking two or three years down the road. As long as, long as you're using something though, it's better than nothing, but that's what I prefer. So that's what we'll use. Found the easiest way to do this, dip a couple spokes in, paint a little bit on the spokes and then we'll roll them together all right so after you get the NICs on you want to find the logos on your rim make sure you orient them correctly some of them aren't super obvious like this one says velocity on both ends but if you look inside here there is some text that will only read correctly from one direction. Um, usually you want to try to make that read properly from the drive side, but as long as there's consistency, you're good. And this is a track wheel, so it doesn't matter nearly as much because the hub is started on both sides. All right, so to line up the logo, uh, first find the logo on the hub, take your starting spoke um, and you want to start it roughly a little bit less than 90 degrees from the logo on the hub. Um, a little bit more if it's a sh lower spoke count hub. Um, a little more if it's higher spoke count. So there's that. And then you're going to find your valve hole on the rim. Generally across from the logo. So valve hole one hole and then two holes so basically valve skip a hole and then that's where we're going for your spoke um, to we're going clockwise from the valve stem put your spoke in thread it on just enough that it's going to stay in place and then you're good to go so again valve hole, skip a spoke, then we put our spoke in. And then on dropping the spokes through the hub flange, there's a lot of debate on heads in versus heads out for the trailing spoke. This first spoke's gonna be the trailing because the hub's gonna turn this direction. So it's gonna be pulling away from the, it's gonna be angled away from the direction the wheel is rolling. Um, doesn't matter. I've talked to people that have really fancy equipment that's tested it. Doesn't actually make a difference, but people like to have very strong opinions on that anyway. Um, but yeah, so we're starting off about 90 from the valve hole or from the lug on the hub, two from the valve hole. Um, and then we'll drop the remainders of our spokes in for this round. This will go in rounds of four. So we're skipping every other spoke. So skip a whole spoke, skip a whole spoke, skip a whole spoke. All right, now we're gonna come back up to the rim and we're gonna skip three spokes 
and then put our spokes. So it'll be every fourth spoke we're going to have one at the rim. So one, two, three, four. And we're going to put it in there. Same thing, we're just threading the, val the nipple on just enough so it holds itself in there. Um, same thing, whole way around. We're just following a pattern. So skip three at a spoke, whole way around. I will save you from watching me do the remainder of these. So after you get all these laced, again, every fourth spoke, I like to lightly bend the spokes around the, or not around the flange, just towards the flange, just a little bit. So they sit more to their natural direction they're going, not going too crazy. And then now we're going to do the typically non-drive side spokes, except for track hub. Um, so from here, so this spoke is going to end up directly next to the valve, right next to the valve here. And um, just to the right of the valve if we're going clockwise. So if you look at the spoke holes on the hub, you've got, they're all set from each other. So here's the spoke we just dropped next to the valve. And then this one's offset just a little bit to the left. So that's the one we're gonna go to, just to the left of it, cause it's gonna go just to the left of the spoke at the rim. So drop that through and you can go ahead and drop the remaining spokes through too. The same idea, skipping a hole on the hub. So now that we got our spoke dropped through, we're gonna throw our spoke in the hole next to the valve. Um, so between the spoke we just dropped and between the valve. So put it through there. Just like the last time. Thread it on just enough to hold in place. And now we're going to do this the whole way around the hub, whole way around the wheel, I mean. And um, same idea, every fourth spoke. Same idea here. I like to bend the spokes around the flanges just lightly so they're closer to the natural direction they'll go once they're tensioned up. So next up, we want to add our last round of drive side spokes. Here we're gonna wanna twist the hub clockwise until it stops. And then we're gonna take a spoke, or spoke, drop it through the remaining hole on this side. And ideally, if you can, to the right of the spoke on the other side, just to make lacing it a little easier. Not all hubs let you do this, but it does make it a little easier if you can. So we're gonna go the whole way around again. All right, so now that we've dropped our spoke hole, or our spoke through the hole, we're going to lace it through the other spokes. Um, this build's going to be a three cross build. So we're gonna cross in three different, Cross the, that means we're gonna cross these remaining spokes in three different points. So the first cross will be under this spoke, right here, directly next to it, under this spoke, and then we're gonna go over this third spoke. So grab your spoke. You usually have to bend it so it doesn't scratch the rim. So we're gonna go under, under, bend it over, and then over this spoke. This is where this nipple shuffle box and the EVT tool will make life easy. So now that we've gone under, under, over, we're gonna come up here, skip a space, or skip a spoke hole from the other drive side spoke, and then we're gonna place ours. So basically what you end up with is the spokes are alternating drive side, non-drive side, drive side, non-drive side, drive side, non-drive side, um, whole way around the wheel. And just like the remain, just like the other ones, we're going to follow that same pattern and do the remaining spokes on this side of the wheel. Now we've done all the drive side spokes. Again, we just followed that pattern from the first one, the whole way around. Um, so flip the wheel over and we're going to do the last of our going to do the last of our non-drive side spokes or 
other side of the HUD because track bike. Um, so take your spokes. Obviously we're at the point where we're just gonna fill the rest of the holes. So do you see how I'm trying to go in this little groove here? You don't wanna go through this gap because you won't be able to pull the spoke through. You wanna go through this bigger gap here where you can actually pull the spoke through completely. So, so drop your spokes through and I'll get to the next step. So we're gonna cross, do our three cross on the other side of the spokes, just like same way as the last time. So we're gonna go under the spoke, under this spoke, and then over this spoke. So we're gonna bend the spoke around the rim so you don't scratch it, and then go under, under, and then over this spoke, and then where it sits will be quite obvious on the rim because it'll be in the only open rim hole. So follow this the rest of the way around. And once you've done that, you've got your wheel laced and ready to tension. All right, hopefully that explains how to tension a wheel a little bit better than my original video did. Um, as always, if you have any questions in the comments, leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer. Um, again, I'll probably end up doing a video separate for tensioning to do show better visuals on how that goes. Um, but until then, you can check my other video, my original video on how to build a wheel like a pro up in one of these corners. Um, and if you liked it, please subscribe to the channel, helps me out, and it definitely motivates me to do more content like this. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys found it helpful. Building your first wheel is definitely very satisfying. Um, so hope you guys enjoy. Thanks. Bye.